for a homeless person to get a job, it's extremely difficult. Saying that, some people do manage it. There are people that have worked full-time jobs and slept in their cars, or they'll do part-time work and sleep on the streets. I would say, though, that people can only sustain that for a short period of time. The general belief is that you're only two paychecks away from the street, any of us. Every individual has their own story and their own reasons. They should look deeper within the person, not on the outside. My name's Tracy Ellis. I'm a senior support worker at Bishopbridge House. A lot of it is down to um, lifestyles that people have previously led going wrong. Um, you know, you could just be a general Joe Bloggs, get made redundant from work, get kicked out of your house because your relationship's broken down because you've got no money, um, got no family around to help you. There's no one to have provide you with accommodation right there, right now, um, and you then end up sleeping on the streets. My name's Caroline. I've been an outreach worker for about 10 years in Norwich and in London. OK, so it's almost 10 o'clock. Um, we're about to go and do outreach. The difficulty with deciding whether someone is homeless or a rough sleeper is that you could move from one place to another and be homeless, but until you're sleeping on the streets, then you're a rough sleeper. A lifestyle of rough sleeping can weigh heavy on people's physical health and mental health. Nickname's Wolf, age is 31. I have been rough sleeping for 16 years on and off. Uh, Michael Reed, my date of birth 1569. I've been to a fair few cities. Uh, I had a flat in Trafalgar Street. I lost that when I uh, got depressed and I was cut myself up. Uh, my name is Jade, I'm 18 years old and I've lived in Norwich all of my life. When I was rough sleeping I stayed in a variety of places uh, including Chapelfield Gardens, Eagle Park because it was very really private. It doesn't matter where you go if you're homeless, you know, you can live in London, you can live here, you can live in Essex, Surrey, it doesn't matter where you go, it's down to you. When I was a kid, I used to run away from my father. I was um, sexually harassed by my stepdad, uh, and um, and my mum was mentally abusive. So you sort of like go through like your early teenagers years, not even teen, like twelve and like stuff, and just think this is this is okay. This is what normal families do, right? So, um, I like packed up a small rucksack and headed out round to friends, stayed there for a few nights, then hopped to another friends. And then it came to the first night I, was, I had to sleep rough. It's in the doorway, there's only one way in, so there's only one way I need to keep an eye out when I'm asleep. When a drunk kicked me in the face when I was asleep and I lost a tooth or two and split my lip. You just, you just kind of think after you've been on the streets out for a while, you just think it's like a picture that you've just stepped into and you know that you just, you just don't belong there. It's always going to be hard, no matter where you go. Sometimes when you're homeless, you think yourself it's too cold. You just want bed for the night. Unfortunately, you get yourself arrested. The main thing that, that came to my head was 
is this what I was born for, to, to be like a little like street rat? This is one place that we would normally come to. Um, it's quite dark, it's um, well covered. Alcohol and substance misuse is sometimes common with rough sleepers. Um, I suppose a stereotypical rough sleeper would be seen as a heavy drinker or a heavy drug user. For the people that do have alcohol and substance misuse issues, um, being on the streets is almost a way of coping I've been on gas for 16 years. Form of depression. Uh, I try and use it to keep myself a different frame of mind from the flashbacks I get. Trying to block them out. If someone had substance misuse issues, obviously it would be um, harder for them to be able to get a job. They're actually not eligible to work because you can't go to work if you're reliant on alcohol every day, every minute of every day. It's a slow spiral. At the moment, um, in our economic climate, we're seeing more and more people that don't have those issues yet are homeless. Most people would say no because they, they want to get out of that situation. It's when you wake up in the night or it very early in the morning, you know, when you're freezing cold. You know, it, it, it's like that all the time, it's like that now. You know what I, mean? I was sleeping rough in minus eight. <coughs> I don't know why people target rough sleepers. Probably because they think they're all on drugs and they know you're a bit of scum and all that. Stuff. But you can be a bit of scum and on drugs living in a house, can't you? So what's the difference? I've been rough sleeping about 14 years. I want to settle down now, I'm getting too old for it. Work at CAPS is very efficient, so when we do have people rough sleeping, we work quite quickly to verify them and make sure they're genuine rough sleepers and then to find the most appropriate accommodation as soon as possible. I'm Simon Wright and I'm the Member of Parliament for Norwich South. There are strategies that government support can, can uh, help fund, uh, particular projects that can be funded and working hand in hand with local authorities who admittedly are facing difficult financial uh, times as a result of, uh, of reductions in, in their ability to spend but nonetheless have a statutory duty to ensure that, uh, that the populations are, uh, that they serve are adequately housed. Initially you would go to the job centre, they have a duty to offer you a certain amount of support. I do want a job, but the point is, there's, there's no jobs there. You know, all these training schemes, they only really promise you the world to get you in there. But in reality, you're just cutting the door queue down. I'm working on getting off the gas and working with um, project groups to deal with it. And then I want to go back into the catering, get somewhere to live. First off, went to the council, and uh, council being council, Naff happened. Naff all. Yeah, they say that I don't fit the criteria. Mm -hmm. You don't think because you're sleeping rough, they're just going to hand you a place, but that just, it doesn't just happen like that. You know, it all comes into points, is it? No room. No room at the inn. Bishopbridge House would work with people to get them ready for employment. Doing any um, meaningful work with them is very hard and it takes time to build up that trust or gain the information.
consequences of not supporting people actually become far, far more um, uh, damaging to, to uh, uh, the uh, public purse in the, in the long term. Unfortunately, I think we will have cuts which will make life very difficult for everybody because homelessness is only going to increase. and just living life by every day because what else can you do? Yeah. <laughs> you take each day as it comes and hope for the best. That's what I say. You've got to smile about these things. The general belief is that you're only two paychecks away from the street, any of us. And um, a lot of people don't have savings these days. They don't have family they can rely on. So if, as any of us, could be made redundant or become unwell and can't work, can't pay our rent, it's actually not as hard as it might seem. And unfortunately, people don't realise that. Which is strange, considering a lot of people have very high credit card bills and struggle to pay rent and all sorts of things, yet they still continue to believe that actually homeless people are just the ones drinking in the doorways or having a laugh in the park or gouching in some corner somewhere um, and I think they might need to open their eyes a bit more to actually see the world around them.